You're about to see the number one thing above all things I could talk about that has destroyed our testimony, that has robbed our home. You're looking at it right there. That's it, the television. And the dirty, rotten computer and all the filth that comes on that too. And you know that it is. You're looking at it right there. I mean, you're looking at it. If you want to know what happened to Monopoly, that's it. If you want to know what happened to family time, that's it. If you want to know what happened to husband and wife fellowship, that's it. If you want to know what happened to good readers in your home, you're looking at it right there. If you want to know what happened to picnics and it, what happened to checkers and, and what happened to Scrabble and what happened to these things, you're looking at it right there. That's it right there. Now, wait a minute. If you want to know why we have the blasphemy and the vulgarity and the permissiveness and the materialism and the worldliness and the carnality and all the dirty, rotten things, more than anything in the world, you're looking at it right there. Oh, Brother Brown. Oh, Brother Brown. I, I know you're right. I know you're right, but I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, good night, my wife. I, I know it's ruining our home, the filthy Internet. We don't have any firewalls on it, don't have any blocks on it. And I know, and besides that, that. Brother Brown, the television, I know it's ruining. It's putting an ungodly, worldly atmosphere in our home. But there's nothing I can do. It was nothing you can do unless you just go forward. Yeah. Unless you just go forward. You say, you say, preacher, what can I do? She'd throw a fit. No, she wouldn't. No. Your wife's not going to say a word if you'll just go forward. Yeah. If you just go forward, you say, well, what can I do? Well, some night when she's cooking supper and, man, everything's getting grilled in there and your children sitting around here like a bunch of catfish at the end of a drain pipe soaking up all of that filth, you just sneak yonder into the garage and you get you. <laughs> and I and you come back, and while your wife's are cooking, you say, children, you may want to move back a little bit. And you take this thing. <laughs> He said, I hate that thing. I hate that thing. I hate, I hate that thing. I hate that thing. Yeah, well, wait a minute. When she comes in, when she comes running in, you be standing there like this going, I hate it. I hate it. She ain't going to say nothing. Some of you men say, hen pecked, you have to roost on the bedpost of a night. You ought to get some grit in your crawl. In God's name, why don't you just go forward? Go forward. She won't say a word. Not a word will she say. About six months later, she's normal. She'll come in and catch you in a sweet mood. And she'll say, you know, honey, I was somewhere today and I saw a television and I thought about the, the nights we used to watch at. And you know what you do? You reach and grab the axe and say, <laughs> <laughs> she won't say anything. No, that'll be... No. Absolutely. Let me go over here, find the sermon I left behind, and we'll be gone.